The news of Alaji Razak Adetunji Alasha's tragic death on Monday, 20th July 2015, spread like wildfire through Lagos and Ogo. As rumors circulated on social media, eliciting joy and celebrations among youths in numerous communities, even as far as Oyo and Oshun State. The celebrations were similar to the event on the 8th of June 1998 when it was announced that General Sani Abacha had kicked the bucket. People trooped to the streets to welcome the news with many ecstatic and relieved that a huge burden had been lifted off their witty shoulders. Who was this mysterious and polarizing figure, known by many names like the Yahoo Boy terrorist, but with the most popular one being Alaji Gay? Who was this ruthless man who many said had girly mannerisms? Why did his death evoke such strong reactions? Alaji Gay's story is one of rags to controversial riches, the cautionary tale of what extreme power and wealth without moral restraint can breed. Born in Lagos in the early 70s into a traditional Yoruba family, Alaji Gay clawed his way from petty crimes to land grabbing scandals to becoming the leader of a ruthless gang of rogue policemen and anti corruption officials who use ruthless tactics of violence, extortion, and blackmail. He built up a vast criminal empire, preying on young internet frosters known as Yahoo Boys, especially those in many Southwest universities and even had some operations outside Nigeria. But Alaji Gay's reign of terror was not to last. The anger and resentment he sparked in his community finally boiled over culminating in a mob justice that took his life. In this video, we explore Alaji Gay's controversial and often criminal rise to power, the forces that enabled his reign of terror, and how extreme wealth and influence without conscience would ultimately lead to his brutal downfall. Stick around to learn the twisted and tragic life story of one of Lagos's most infamous crime kingpins. Alaji Gay started out as a small time street hustler and he later joined the Omoniles, who can be best described as land grabbers. Omonile is a term used to describe landowners or local chiefs in Lagos, Nigeria, who claim ownership of vast portions of land, most often without legal documentation or proof of ownership. They create documents including fake survey maps and title deeds to legitimize the land. They are notorious for selling the same piece of land to multiple buyers, leading to disputes and legal battles. Victims only realize they've been cheated after making payments, and in some cases, even developing the land. Alaji Gay also ventured into a lucrative part-time job as an unofficial informant with the EFCC, Nigeria's anti-corruption agency focused on economic crimes. This he will do by identifying the movements of these frosters and getting them arrested. It appears he was not satisfied with his part-time job as an informant. Rather, he secured his own squad of rogue policemen and EFCC officials and started making arrests of these Yahoo boys himself. It is speculated he mainly extorted them rather than bringing them to justice. He was not afraid to use violence to get what he wanted. Until that tragic end, Alaji Gay was a very powerful yet effeminate figure who struck fear into the hearts of many. His girly mannerisms and flamboyant style concealed the ruthlessness, violence and criminality that formed the basis of his empire. To achieve all of this, Alaji Gay cultivated relationships with powerful politicians, high-ranking police officers, traditional leaders and civil servants, enabling his success.
Alachigi initially started out as an informant for the EFCC, earning rewards for tips that led to the arrest of Yahoo Boys. This exposed him to how lucrative extorting and blackmailing trusters could be. With time, he built his own network of enforcers and staged increasingly brazen fake raids to maximize his earnings from the victims. You see, Yahoo Boys is a term used to describe individuals who engage in various forms of online fraud, including email and romance scams, and also identity theft. Since he knew these boys were into illegal stuff and would be reluctant to go to the police to report him, he hunted them down ruthlessly, often showing no mercy. Alaji Gay's modus operandi for extorting money from them involved elaborate studio EFCC raids. They were more like hostage situations. When Alaji Gay and his men staged a raid, they would descend on a location in force, sealing off the property and surrounding the area with armed men. Everyone inside would be ordered to freeze and put their phones on the table. The officers would then go through the phones, looking for incriminating evidence like foreign phone numbers or old chats with foreign contacts. Once such evidence was found, the owner of the phone will be confronted and ordered to pay an exorbitant fine, typically around 1 million naira with little room for negotiations. These high-pressure tactics and show of force, combined with the officers arriving in official-looking vehicles and brandishing real police weapons, convinced the victims that these raids were legitimate. In reality, most of the raids were unauthorized and the fines collected went straight into Alaji Gay's pockets. He was known to frequent university campuses, especially Ladoki Akintola University in Obumosho, University of Lagos, Olabisi Onobanjo University in Ogun State, Leeds City University in Ibadan, and many other state schools in southwest Nigeria. He was also known to operate in areas like Suruleri, and Alagbado, where he lived. He allegedly extorted money and laptops from internet fraudsters, not just in Nigeria, but as far as South Africa and Malaysia. His network demonstrated that his operation was not merely local, but also international. As a victim, you have an option to pay in kind, which means sleeping with him if you were caught with incriminating evidence and unable to meet his financial demands. In this letter to olufamous.com, now a defunct entertainment blog, Ibrahim Dipo, a final year student at Leeds City University at that time, recounts his disturbing encounter with Alajige. Dipo describes how the police and EFCC officials came to his house with Alajige and showed him a fake petition with a signature of the Inspector General of Police. The letter reads, My name is Ibrahim Dipo a final year student at Lee City University. Although I admit what I was doing with my friends was wrong, but no other means of survival. I drive a Range Rover Sport. On the 15th of December last year, 2012, some policemen and EFCC officials came to my house alongside with the popular ex-convict man, now police fake informant, called Alaji Gay. They came around 7 a.m. and jumped into my compound. They showed me a fake petition, which I thought was real, with the signature of Inspector General of Police. They arrested me and took my Range Rover Sport wristwatch jewelry worth 590,000 naira, $3,900 in cash, laptops, and took me in the downfall bus to an unknown destination. The allergic gay asked me how much I had in my bank account. I have a total of 3.2 million naira in my first bank account. He was ordering the fake EFCC and policemen because he is in charge. The allergic gay told me to go and withdraw all and was holding all my stuff. And also the fake EFCC men told me if I notify anyone they will use the petition against me. Out of fear, I went to the bank and withdrew the money for Alaji with 10,000 naira balance. 
He also collected my original car papers. He released me and didn't give me my car back after they collected all my money. I keep calling his private line. He later told me my car is being sold and if I want to use power, then IG will release another petition and the EFCC will arrest me again. A month after, I lost my mom and my life has been rough for me. Please, the IG of police can look into the issue of allergy care. Why are fake policemen and fake EFCC extorting money from Yahoo boys? It's really sad. This kind of frustration can lead someone to armed robbery. Few days after, he arrested five of my friends too at Unilag and took all their cars with some policemen from Alagbo. The total money he got from them was in total of 7 million naira and 3 range spots and 2 LR3. Now he's calling me and looking for more money after he collected everything I had. The policemen from Alagmo were even arguing with Alaji K that the share of the money he gave them was small. What a shame to the Nigerian police and EFCC. Alaji Gay's fake EFCC bust exemplified his willingness to employ violent, corrupt tactics to acquire wealth through illegitimate means. They were a cornerstone of his modus operandi and criminal enterprise that funded his lavish lifestyle. Three years before the Ibrahim Dipo incident, he had a case of alleged rape labelled against him. In February 2009, he was declared wanted by the ARG Police Command of Balagos for allegedly sexually assaulting an 18-year-old boy called Kabiru Amusa. He had got close to the boy who had high hopes that Alajige would help him secure a better paying job. He later on invited the boy over the pretext that they would chat about his new job. He was said to have drugged a drink of John Simon which he gave the boy and sodomized him numerous times leading to bleeding. He was eventually arrested in November 2011 but escaped prosecution, suggesting his syndicate had connections that enabled him to evade justice. If he had been tried in court and found guilty, he would have spent at least 14 years according to Section 357 of the Criminal Code Act of Nigeria. Figures like Alajige, with his alleged activities of extortion and allegations of sexual abuse around 2015, contributed to rising tensions that would build up over the next few years and ultimately lead to the NSAS protests in 2020. For many years, Alajige operated his extortion syndicate with apparent impunity but very little is publicly known about the man himself or his motivations. We have a letter he wrote to a blogger, Torch Entertainment, published on the 11th of September 2013, where he responded to the Brian Dipo letter. This letter offers a rare glimpse into the mind of this controversial figure. The letter provides a possible justification of his motivations from beyond the grave shedding light on the war against Yahoo Boys. Now, we present what may be Alaji Gay's only known documented thoughts on his campaign against corruption. Dear Samuel, I have helped the Nigerian police and EFCC arrest over 500 Yahoo Boys in Nigeria. They know I have done a good job so far. I started with policemen from Alagbo when the IG confirmed I am doing a good job. He invited me to Abuja and assigned the commissioner, DIG, and AIG, EFCC chairman, to work with me. I have made them recover a lot of expensive SUVs and properties bought by Yahoo Boys and 419ers. Nigerians should always thank me for a good job, as the police authorities have always had my support. The allegations by Ibrahim Dipo are not fully true because we returned his car back to him. The money in his account was not up to that amount. Please publish it so people will not see me as a bad person and give me a bad name. 
Alaji Gay portrays himself as a civic-minded citizen, deserving praise for helping recover ill-gotten gains from fraudsters. However, authorities have repeatedly denied any official relationship with Alaji Gay, casting doubt on his claim. He tries to downplay the specific allegations leveled against him, while pleading to publish his letter by saying, so people will not see me as a bad person. However, the dismissive and self-serving tone of his letter undermines his professed motives and reinforces his controversial reputation. The death of Alaji Gay sent shockwaves throughout the Alagbado community in Lagos. The land grabber and Yahoo boy terrorist, as he was referred to, was hacked to death by an angry mob on the 20th of July 2015, after he allegedly forcibly grabbed land from its original owners in the Temidire Alagbado area. Roughly about a month before his death, on Wednesday, June 16, 2015, about 25 landlords had stormed the premises of the Lagos State Police Command to report Alaji Gay. They accused him of being a suspected land grabber and a homosexual rapist. Alaji Gay refuted the allegations leveled against him, adding that the bale of the area, Alaji Najimu Abioye, was a usurper. It was learned that on the day of the incident, News of a protest against him reached him while he was at a construction site nearby. The protest was organized by landlords who had accused him of using violence and intimidation to acquire their properties. At first peaceful, the protests soon turned violent when Alaji Gay and his boys stormed the venue and started taking photographs of the protesters, and he was eventually chased away. He fled the scene and went to the Alagbado police station where he accused a senior police officer of conspiring with the community leaders to stage the protest against him. However, he later returned to the scene of the protest with more thugs and shot sporadically, leading to the death of one of the protesters, Ganiu Adebayo, while another victim who was shot survived and was treated at the hospital. A grieved youth in the area who learned of Adebayo's death organized another protest, which resulted in further unrest. The angry mob mounted barricades on Mosalashi and Ibayo roads and challenged Alaji Gay. When they sighted him, the angry protesters rushed towards him and he then ordered his driver to speed off, thereby hitting one Mr. Rahim, alias Denge. The protesters pursued and eventually caught up with him on Mosalashi road. He attempted to resist his attackers with the aid of his armed thugs, but they abandoned him and fled the scene. The mob hacked Alaji Gay to death as he wriggled in pain. Having survived many attempts on his life before that incident, he was confident that any attack on him would prove ineffective as he was known for his use of charms for protection. Right Halaji Gay had relied heavily on his mother, who served as his support and backbone, but unfortunately for him, he had buried her a month before this incident in an elaborate ceremony. On the following day after the incident, Halaji Gay was buried at his house on AIT Road in Alagbado, according to Islamic law. After news of Halaji Gay's death circulated, there were wild jubilations by suspected Yahubas all over the southwest of Nigeria, with many of them knowing that Alaji Gay, who was their chief tormentor, had just died and were relieved to hear of his passing. Despite his vast wealth, power and influence, Alaji Gay led a tragic life that ended in a brutal and violent death. While he amassed a real estate empire and accumulated significant assets through corrupt and criminal means, he died alone in his 40s, with no family or loved ones by his side except his thugs who could not protect him when it mattered the most. All he had was the fleeting fear and respect his ruthlessness commanded in others. 
As evidence of his wealth, Alaji Gay had amassed significant assets, including a hundred million naira hotel in Amikon Lake, a thirty million naira hotel on AIT Road, a newly completed fifty million naira building in the Alagbado area, a one twenty million naira newly built hotel in Akute, an estimated fifty million naira worth of land in other parts of Lagos. This amounts to over three hundred and fifty million naira in assets without accounting for the exotic vehicles he had purchased for himself and those he had forcefully taken from fraudsters. Based on conservative estimates of Alajige's known assets from 2015, and factoring in the significant devaluation of the Naira since then, a reasonable projection would place Alajige's wealth in today's Naira at well over 1 billion Naira, demonstrating the immense fortune he amassed through alleged de illegal means. Alaji Gay's controversial legacy includes the stain of his alleged criminal activities, from extorting Yahoo boys to acquiring land through intimidation and threats, and lastly, rape. In the end, for all his power and wealth, Alaji Gay died a lonely and sad death at the hands of an angry mob, seeking justice for his many victims. His notorious reign as a fake anti-corruption crusader could not protect him from the rage of an oppressed community he had exploited for far too long 